And when it arrives, ah, <laughs> I'll smash that with a hammer! Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 voice acting performances that didn't have to go that hard. Yo, 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 yo! Enemies of justice, prepare for the fierce attack of my what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? For this list, we'll be looking at the fiercest, funniest, and most out-there vocal showcases in animated movies. Which voice acting legend is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. John Cleese as Jean Bob, the Swan Princess. Actor John Cleese lent his own distinctive English accent to King Harold in Shrek 2. Stop being such a drama king. Fine, fine, pretend there's nothing wrong. La dee da dee da dee da. Isn't it all wonderful? However, it wasn't the first time he'd voiced an animated amphibian. 90s kids may remember his gloriously over the top performance in The Swan Princess as Jean Bob the French Frog. When she learns that I have risked my life for them, the kissing will not stop. And then you'll change into a prince. Precisely. Princess Odette's little green sidekick is vain, pompous, and convinced that he's actually a prince. Yes, the character is a total stereotype and the accent leaves a lot to be desired, but Cleese throws absolutely everything at the role. He gives a fast, funny performance that squeezes every joke out of the script. Mr. Lorenzo, trudge along. Friends call me Speed. And Jean-Bob? I have no friends, only servants. And they call me Johannes. The movie wouldn't nearly be as fun without him. Number 9. Ian McKellen as the Toad, Flushed Away The cast of Ardman and DreamWorks' collaboration Flushed Away is chock full of British acting talent, from Kate Winslet to Bill Nye. Time is cold. That's why I wore me mittens. Huh? Hitman don't wear mittens! Take them off! You're embarrassing me! Well, it's all right for you. You got little hands. But Ian McKellen stands out amongst the greats in that crowd with a bombastic performance as the villainous Toad. His Toad has a deep voice that is oozing with evil. Forget the ruby! It's the master cable that I want. Although he lives in a sewer, the character feels more like a regal Bond villain instead of an underground dweller. As the one-time pet of the young Prince Charles, the flushed-away antagonist has delusions of grandeur and a devious plan to destroy the city of Ratropolis. Cheer your old dead up. Poor daddy. Surrounded by filthy rats in this joyless, sunless void. As McKellen revels in every bit of wickedness, we are completely here for it. Number 8. Jeremy Irons as Scar, The Lion King while British-accented villains have become a cliché, Jeremy Irons' tones were just perfect for Scar. Oh dear, I've said too much. Well, I suppose you'd have found out sooner or later. You being so clever and all. Since The Lion King shares quite a few similarities with Hamlet, the filmmakers wanted an actor with a Shakespearean pedigree to take on the role. They were also looking for someone with a patronizing quality to their voice. Irons' sardonic tone contrasted perfectly with the rich and warm bass provided by James Earl Jones for Mufasa. Oh, I shall practice my curtsy. Don't turn your back on me, Scar. Oh no, Mufasa. Perhaps you shouldn't turn your back on me. Iron switched up the pacing and wording of his lines to make each piece of dialogue stand out. He even damaged his vocal cords during the recording of Be Prepared. The point that I must emphasize is... You won't get a sniff without me! Ultimately, Irons' choice to go above and beyond led to the creation of an iconic villain. Number 7. Billy Crystal as Mike Wazowski, Monsters, Inc. Billy Crystal's everyman persona, comedy chops, and distinctive voice made him the perfect fit for Monsters, Inc.'s Mike Wazowski. We do the voices first, and then they animate to what we do, because we play around so much. This little one-eyed green guy is the movie's hero and best friend to John Goodman Sully. While Goodman's kind tones turn the big blue hairy monster into a gentle giant, Crystal gets all the laughs. Using mainly spoons, we dig a tunnel under the city and release it into the wild. Bones. That's it. I'm out of ideas. We're closed. Unlike most animated movies, the pair acted together in the recording studio. This allowed them to ad-lib and bounce off of each other. Crystal's vocal work feels wittier and more authentic as a result. 
He's discussed his love for the character in several interviews. I think he's my favorite character I've ever played because I, I just so relate to him. He's a, he's a little guy in a big man's world. He's, he's so optimistic. He doesn't let anything get in his way. It's safe to say that all the enthusiasm really comes through in his performance. Yeah, put that thing back where it came from. Also help me. So help me. So help me. And come. <laughs> Number six, Steve Carell as Gru, Despicable Me franchise. Every good villain needs a distinctive speaking voice. If the accent isn't British, then it has to be Eastern European? What is Gru's accent anyway? I I feel like that's a dig on my performance. They love me! He's from not here. And that's really all you need to know. Whatever he was aiming for, Steve Carell had a lot of fun with the role. The comic actor really hands things up as the movie's lovable lead. We are going to steal! For effect. His unusual accent makes even the most basic bits of dialogue sparkle with bizarre humor. And thanks to Carell's seemingly endless supply of energy, there's not a single line that falls flat. It's like my heart has a tooth and it's got a cavity that can only be filled with children. Carell definitely understood that the assignment was to bring light and shade to a character who remains totally over the top. While he may call himself a villain, it's hard not to instantly warm up to Gru. Now make them drink the milk. Oh, I don't like this book. This is going on forever. Number 5. Jack Black as Poe, Kung Fu Panda Franchise we know that Jack Black will always give everything he's got to any role he ends up in. However, there's something special about his role as Poe. What is that noise you're making? Laughter? I never heard of it! Work hard, Panda, and maybe someday you will have ears like mine. The Kung Fu Panda franchise calls for more than funny dialogue. Since it's filled to the brim with Kung Fu sequences, training montages, and furious fight scenes, Black has to make a ton of expressive noises. What are you gonna do, big guy? Sit on me? <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> now, nah, I'm gonna use this. <laughs> you want it? Come get it. Plus, he has to convincingly sound like a panda. That is, if a panda could talk and do kung fu. On top of all of that, Black's infectious energy makes Poe an extremely lovable panda. You're bluffing. Shifu didn't teach you that. Nope. I figured it out. Skadoosh. His enthusiastic vocals made us feel like this unlikely dragon warrior would be a ton of fun to spar with. Justice! The most important meal of the day. Number 4. Tom Hanks as Woody, the Toy Story franchise. Like all the best comedy characters, Andy's favorite cowboy doll is definitely a flawed hero. Sorry, howdy, my name is Woody and this is Andy's room. That's all I wanted to say. And also, there has been a bit of a mix-up. This is my spot, see? When Buzz comes into his life, he quickly transforms from a completely nice guy to a petty, jealous, and angry version of himself. Hanks plays the contrast with great skill and humor. Watching Woody get increasingly frustrated with the unflappable Buzz is always a ton of fun. You are a toy! You weren't the real Buzz Lightyear, you're an, uh, you're an action figure! You are a child's plaything! Luckily, there's plenty of other issues that stress the cowboy out along the way. Just a sec! Buzz, will you get up here and give me a hand? <laughs> That's very funny, Buzz. This is serious! Thankfully, Hanks never holds back whenever Woody flies off the handle. He manages to keep the character on the right side of likable, even when he's totally in the wrong. Number 3. Eartha Kitt as Yzma, The Emperor's New Groove Eartha Kitt was well known for being the beautiful and raspy voice behind Santa Baby. I really do believe in you. Let's see if you believe in me. At the turn of the millennium, she added a new iconic performance to her resume when she played Yzma. What? A llama? He's supposed to be dead! Kit plays a wicked and scheming character who's determined to steal the throne from Emperor Cusco. During her journey, she gets to aim a lot of her venom at her lovable assistant, Kronk. Kit's incredible comedic timing made it easy for her to steal every scene she's in. This act of highest treason has but one punishment! Death! Gods! <laughs> Take him 
away. <laughs> and the actress made us love how eccentric the character was no matter what sinister act she was trying to get away with. Thanks to Kit's commitment to the role, Yzma was one of the most memorable characters in the movie. Pull the lever, Grunk. Roll lever! Huh? Why do we even have that lever? Number 2. Eddie Murphy as Donkey, the Shrek franchise While the Shrek franchise is known for its irreverent comedy, one of the best things about Eddie Murphy's Donkey is how adorably earnest he is. Oh, and it is lovely! Just beautiful! You know you are quite a decorator. It's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. Shrek's annoying travel companion has more to say than anybody else in the movies, and it's usually at top speed. Murphy's making us laugh at every turn by having Donkey chatter and sing his way through the story. Look, you love this woman, don't you? Yes. You wanna hold her? Yes. Please her? Yes! Then you got to, got to try a little tenderness! The chicks love that romantic crap! However, he also gets his share of emotional moments, too. Whether we're laughing with the character or at him, Murphy's enthusiastic delivery completely wins us over. He's given us tons of lines that we still quote today. No, oh, no. this is going to be fun. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. Although we loved Murphy as Mushu, Donkey is arguably his more iconic animated role. All right, that's it. Dishonor. Dishonor on your whole family. Make a note of this. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Maui, Moana. A big personality like Maui had the support of an energetic and singing Johnson. Samuel L. Jackson as Frozone, The Incredibles. In a small role, he made a cool and huge impression. Honey! What? Where's my super suit? What? Where is my suit? Brittany Murphy as Gloria, Happy Feet. She stole our hearts as a penguin with a heart song. Angela Lansbury as the Dowager Empress Marie, Anastasia. Lansbury brought a ton of emotion to every line. Once upon a Anastasia. My Anastasia. Gary Oldman as Ruber, Quest for Camelot. The actor really revels in Ruber's madness. Juliana, I was in the neighborhood and I thought I'd invade. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Gilbert Gottfried, Farious The late Gilbert Gottfried made his mark as a voice actor by putting 1,000% effort into each and every role he got. <laughs> Hiya, Dutch! Beatles my name and Razzmatazz is my game. How do you do? How you feeling? Everything okay? He made a Beatle in Thumbelina sound like a fully formed character. Additionally, you can count on hearing his voice as an insurance-loving duck for years. I fly. Should I ask about it at work? Eh? Really? What's it called? I fly! But Gottfried's most iconic voice role was Iago. Yes, Merritt, yes! And then we drop Papa-in-law and the little woman off a cliff. Yeah! Curse splat! Although he was just meant to be Jafar's talking parrot sidekick, the comedian went above and beyond to make him so much more than another bird. Nice shot, Jafar! When I first came in, they had the script, and I was just talking into a mic, and that's when I just started improvising. Outside of Genie's improvs, Iago gets some of the movie's best lines. And it's easy to tell that Gottfried was having a great time going the extra mile to record every single piece of dialogue. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get out. I gotta start packing, your highness. Only a century. We gotta travel light. Bring the guns, the weapons, the knives. And uh, how about this picture? I don't know. I think I'm making a weird face in it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.